Chandler, why did I have to dress up like this if we're just recording? Hello and welcome to Who is Best, a show where I, Low Claudine, respectfully talk about Tifa and all other party members in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and place them in a tier list. Rebirth was my most anticipated game of 2024 and it's finally here. Now, I don't think everything in this game is perfect, but the battle system and character balancing is where this title absolutely shines. Square Enix has been working on this action turn-based hybrid gameplay since Final Fantasy XIII, and I think they finally perfected it here. Now, before we get started, let's talk about the characters. Every single party member in Final Fantasy VII was created with such care that the difference from the bottom of the list to the top isn't some huge gap like it usually is. If a character lands low on this list, do not take that as they are useless or terrible. These lists always scale to the game, meaning that the low tier is specific to the title and not universal. Also, if you want to know who the true strongest character in this game is, it's the enemy skill materia. Almost every best build requires this bad boy. Today, we'll be rating all seven playable characters, considering them as if they have their best Materia builds. Seeing as anyone can equip Materia, characters will be rated more heavily on their unique skills and abilities, stats, limit breaks, and synergies. We'll also be considering accessibility and usefulness in both normal mode and hard mode. For those that don't know, hard mode is obviously harder by stripping you of the ability to use items, and MP does not regenerate upon resting at a chocobo stop. All right, I think that about covers everything. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and stick around to the end for a bonus list. There is no one I can place in the tier for this title, so we're going to start with the low tier. Red 13 has the second best dodge, amazing stats for both tanking, attacking, and magic, and can heal or cast haste on the party without using MP or materia. Red 13's Vengeance mode can be incredibly versatile, and because of this mechanic and his incredible movement kit, he is a much better character in hard mode than in standard mode. On top of all this, he has Stardust Ray, which is the single best AoE ability in Rebirth. He can also do some top tier damage by combining Reaper's Touch with the Dark Side Materia, though this requires him to be at low health. Now with all that being said, the true issue with Red 13 is that all his attacks are conditional, and he never quite surpasses any other character in usefulness. Tifa outspeed and outdamages him, Cloud has better utility, especially in standard mode, Barrett is a better tank, and so on and so on. The Mid-Tier Believe it or not, the next member of this tier list and first on the mid-tier is Cloud Strife. Cloud is a safe character built for the player. He's the ultimate jack of all trades, having physical or magical DPS builds, a tank or support build, and even a half-decent stagger build. He is by far the most versatile member of the team and fills almost every niche. In standard mode, many of his builds are fantastic and can carry you through the game. In hard mode, he almost always needs to be a physical damager with high ATB recovery. He pairs really well with the enemy skill materia and again, is just all around good, but doesn't go as far as other party members in breaking this title's battle system. And speaking of breaking this game, next on the mid tier is Kate Sith. Let's get the bat out of the way. Kate Sith is the last party member you obtain and can't be used in the final battle. This is a major issue if you've built an entire strategy around him. On top of this, many of his abilities are luck based and though good are dependent on dice rolls. So why is he at the top of the mid tier? Well, not only are dice roll and Moogle punch incredibly useful skills for damage and stagger, but Kate Sith's limit break is incredibly strong. All of this pales in comparison though to his attack parry mechanic. You see, Kate Sith is the only character that can both attack and parry at the exact same time. By not moving around while riding the Moogle, Kate Sith can both cast and parry while his Moogle attacks as well. If practiced, this is an insane exploit that can melt enemies. If he had better accessibility, Kate Sith would have made it much higher on this list. The Top Tier First up on the top tier is Barrett Wallace. Barrett is here for one simple reason. He is by far the best tank in the game and with the right build can be nearly unkillable and make your entire party unkillable as well. Though he is slow and has a terrible dodge, if you've mastered perfect block and use steel skin with the right setup, Barrett won't only not take much damage, but he'll regain HP faster than he receives said damage. It's actually an insane setup that I suggest everyone try. Slap on the fact that he's long range and has a ton of staggering potential. If using Steel Skin and the enemy skill Self Destruct, Barrett will survive with a single HP, which is great for the final push of damage. I should also mention that he has the most required party member sections of the game than anyone else. This essentially means that in hard mode, you'll be forced to use him for a number of boss battles. The final member of the top tier is the Babe Tifa Lockhart. 
Tifa isn't only the highest physical damager, but she is the staggering queen. No characters in the game can build the stagger meter faster. Because of this, Tifa is a must for almost every single optimal party comp. Once staggered, with the right ATB generation and bridled strength activated. If you spam dive kick, Tifa will then quickly dish out an ungodly amount of damage. Oh, and did I mention that she is easily the best fit for the enemy skill materia? Because she can regain ATB so quickly, Tifa is optimal for the plasma discharge skill. She also has the best movement and the single best dodge in Rebirth as well. The only bad thing I can say here is that Tifa has the worst range of any character, especially when facing off against flying enemies. The God Tier First on the God Tier is Yuffie Kisiragi. After finishing Integrate, I said that Square would need to nerf Yuffie or she would be the single best party member in the game. Not only did Square not nerf her, Yuffie manages to be even better. The main thing that makes Yuffie so incredible is her ninjutsu attacks. She can toss her shuriken into an enemy, then spam long range attacks. Using ninjutsu, she can apply either fire, ice, lightning, or wind element to her shuriken. This makes her capable of exploiting any enemy with an elemental weakness. She can easily pressure most enemies, making them easier to stagger with someone like Tifa. Yuffie also pairs perfectly with the dark side and enemy skill materia, having multiple abilities that complement things like Plasma Discharge. But just when you think she can't get any better, Yuffie has Doppelganger, an ability that allows her to make a double that copies her moves, essentially doubling her attack power and potency. Do not sleep on Yuffie. The final member of the god tier and top of this list is Aerith Gainsborough. Aerith was pretty busted in the first title, but she had the worst availability of any party member. This go around, she is a constant in your party, and that's good because she is absolutely crazy. First of all, she has the highest possible magic stat of any character along with the highest MP. This makes her ideal for magic damage or support. But what is key to Aerith breaking rebirth is her Astral Ward and ATB Ward. Astral Ward puts a circle on the ground. If Aerith or any party member stands in this circle, they will cast a spell twice. Obviously, this works great with most spells, but in the late game, if given a boosted Quaykaga, Aerith can obliterate enemies. Now, that is awesome, but really what puts her over the edge here is her synergy with Yuffie. A magic-focused Yuffie with Doppelganger and Quaykaga, casting twice within an Astral Ward, will give you absolutely busted damage numbers. But here's the thing. That isn't even the most broken aspect of the Yuffie-Aerith combo. Aerith's ATB Ward increases ATB recovery for anyone standing inside it. Yuffie's Brumo form, if used to evade an attack, increases ATB, and while inside the ATB ward, Yuffie can generate infinite ATB while also being unkillable. Aerith alone or paired with others is the single best character in this title, period. And that's our list, I hope you enjoyed. If you'd like to support the channel and also request your own list, consider becoming a Patreon member today. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Bonus round, top 10 best dressed characters go. Number 10, Kate Sith's Court Jester. Number 9, Cloud's Ocean Chocobo. Number 8, Aerith's Pink Mermaid. Number 7, Barrett's Junon Naval Crew. Number 6, Tifa's Majestic Glamour. Number 5, Yuffie's Moogle Hat and Cape. Number 4, Aerith's Floral Delight. Number 3, Cloud's Midgar Infantry. Number 2, Tifa's Shining Spirit. And number 1, Miss Low Cloud and Tifa. Go ahead. A little bit more of a smack. Come on. Was that? Put a little oomph in. You want me to do more? Do, you get get Gosh. more of my head so that we get the sound. Okay, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Dang it, I laughed too fast. Okay, one more time. Okay. <laughs> one more time. Yeah, just like that. Keep on doing it. <laughs>